What is this button that says click me? Wait, what the? Why did it move up here? Uh, okay, I guess this is trying to play games with me. All right, don't worry. I'm going to see what happens if I just keep clicking on this. Come on. Come on. Bro, you can't be serious right now. All right, let's think about this for a minute. So with this button that I kept trying to click like this, it looks like it's moving the position of this button to be somewhere that's relative to this little box here. But what does this mean exactly? I think what this is trying to say is that whenever I click on this button, it's going to pick a random position that's relative to this little box that's over here that this button is literally contained inside. So I think this is with the use case of a frame, which is actually a really helpful um, GUI element inside of Roblox that I think it's something important that you should uh, be aware of. Uh, so that is basically what I'm going to be teaching you how to do in this episode, while also covering a another type of frame that is similar to frames called scrolling frames. So with that being said, let's go straight into implementing the uh, frames and scrolling frames. <laughs> now that we understand it, let's implement it. So to reiterate what a frame essentially is, is that it's a container that contains our GUI elements put together inside of one a frame so that we can change, manipulate, and move around that individual frame that contains all these GUI elements together so that we have a much easier time organizing and also uh, changing some stuff around when it comes to GUI elements. So to show you what this looks like, the first thing we need, we need to do on the right side is to, of course, add a screen GUI as usual for any GUI element. And then what we're gonna do is hit the plus sign and we're going to add in a frame and this is what it should look like. So when we add in this frame, it should be displayed on the top left of our screen like any other GUI element and we can move this around. But now, what next? Well, to, to tell you the truth, this is literally it. This is basically the frame right here that contains uh, every other GUI element that we can use in order to manipulate, move around, and organize our GUIs inside of our, uh, inside of our Roblox game. So our frame is on the right side and it has all these properties that we can work with, but there aren't really anything too special about the frame except for this property called clip descendants, but I'm gonna tell you what that is in a second. And so this frame, since I mentioned that this acts as a container for other GUI elements, let's go ahead and start adding some GUI elements onto this thing. So let's hit the plus sign next to frame and then let's add in a text label. Uh, it's kind of hard to see this text label, so we're actually going to change the background color of this frame to something darker so we can see the other stuff. All right, and now we have our text label. So when we add it, it's in the origin position of the frame and not the and not the actual game. Because if you remember, if we add in a GUI element, it starts at the position origin of the screen, which is somewhere up here. But now, uh, since we have a text label that's contained inside of this frame, the frame is our new container. So the beginning position is going to be at the origin of wherever this frame is. And so that's why it's going to start here. So anything we put in here is basically contained inside of here. But we can even posi position these elements outside of the GUI frame as well. There's actually a property that uh, allows us to not do that. It'll just hide it if it decides to go off of the, the container or frame or whatever um, with the property that I just mentioned earlier called clip descendants. So if we highlight our frame and then we press clip descendants and then we take our text label and try to drag this off the screen, you can see that it's becoming invisible because it has to be in because it has to be within the boundaries of the frame in order to in order for it to be visible. But we can bypass this by uh, unchecking clip descendants with the frame. And now we can basically drag this wherever we want, but is still inside of our frame. So now that we understand this, we can add in even more elements to our frame by hitting the plus sign. Let's say we create a text button this time. Uh, we can position this button somewhere else, like off to the side here, make it colorful or whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we can even add more elements like a text box. Uh, this text box can just go wherever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then. Once again, you can turn on clip descendants so that whatever is outside of the boundaries of the frame, it will not show. So that is basically 
uh, what a frame does. Uh, it's basically just a container that contains GUI elements that we can use to modify uh, and organize our GUI elements inside of our Roblox games. Because one thing you might notice is that if I try dragging this frame around, it's dragging every other element that's inside of this frame alongside with it because now that these GUI elements are um, inside of this frame, basically all of these elements belong to the frame. So if we move the frame, then it moves all the other GUI elements as well. So you can treat this as like a folder or a model if you're working with 3D objects, but this time it's going to be 2D objects. So that's kind of what this is like. I also want to add important notes to when you're changing the position and size of these individual parts uh, inside of a frame is that when you put elements inside of a frame, then the position and size uh, properties are now relative to the frame that it's located in and not the entire screen. So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that let's say we had our text label here. So the position here is now 0, 0, 0, 0, because this position is relative to the frame that it's at. So this is 0, 0, 0, 0, not this being 0, 0, 0, 0, because this would be if this was parented to just a uh, screen GUI rather than anything else that's uh, inside of it. So that's an important distinction to know about. If you're handling positions and sizes, uh, with GUI elements that are inside of a frame, you have to make sure that what you're um, changing is relative to the frame or the GUI container that it's uh, contained inside. Same thing to do with size. Let's say if we're changing the scale property of these sizes, then these sizes are relative to the frame and not the entire screen. So a size of one would be from where it started at the frame to the entire uh, way through for this specific frame and not for the entire uh, Roblox screen. And we can pretty much do the same thing with the Y scale as well uh, for it to cover the entire frame with uh, a scale of one for both the X and the Y axis. It's not covering anything outside of the frame unless we decide to go past one. So let's say we had size 1.5 for the Y scale, then it's going to fill up the frame entirely, but then go an extra mile of going through 1.5 uh, as the scale so that it goes slightly above the frame. Unless, of course, we had clip descendants on, then we won't see that. But now you might ask, what's the difference between a frame and a folder? So if you remember what a folder looks like, we could basically just go to the screen GUI, hit the plus sign, add in a folder right here, and then we can basically take these GUI elements and put it inside of here. So yeah, this already looks kind of messed up because this isn't within the bounds of a relative frame. That's why it just covered the entire screen. Here's the thing about frames that make it convenient over folders is that this is literally a GUI element in and of itself. So this frame has GUI elements that you can change that will also change the properties that are inside of it, like position and size, for instance. If I, let's say, change the size of the frame itself to 0.5, then it's going to scale all of the elements that are inside of the frame alongside with it to match the new size of this frame. You cannot do this with a folder because a folder literally has no properties that relate to a GUI whatsoever because a folder is not a GUI element. A frame, however, is a GUI element. That's why we're able to uh, modify all of the properties inside of this frame container to whatever we change with the actual frame itself. So that is an important distinction to know about. Now that we understand frames, I now want to introduce you to another type of frame that's called scrolling frames. And you can kind of guess what scrolling frames do. They basically act as frames, except you're able to scroll up and down or left and right on these frames to show a lot more of what this frame has to offer. So you've probably seen these in Roblox games before, uh, but now I'm going to show you how to implement them inside of Roblox Studio. So on the right side of screen GUI, let's hit the plus sign and we're going to add in a a uh, scrolling frame, which looks like this. Um, and for right now, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to hide our uh, our first frame. So we're gonna so we're gonna click on it, drop down a little bit, and then hit the visible sign so that we don't see it anymore. And let's take the scrolling frame and move it over here to the middle. And let's scale this up just a little bit. So one noticeable difference you can see with this is that there's this little bar on the right side, and this indicates our scrolling bar uh, to let us know that we can scroll on this frame and it'll show a bunch of results 
of uh, whatever is contained inside of the scrolling frame by going up and down on it. We're not putting all of the elements inside of one picture because we're able to dynamically move up and down to see all of these different elements that are supposedly going to be inside of here. So to demonstrate this, let's add in a bunch of objects inside of the scrolling frame so that we can see it move past us when we scroll up and down. So let's hit the plus sign next to scrolling frame and let's add in a text label. Uh, and let's also change the background color of this frame to something different so that we can see it better. Uh, okay, and so now let's, okay, and so now we have this text label. If we scroll down, we can see that we can no longer see it uh, within our view because we're scrolling down onto the page. Uh, unless we scroll all the way back up, then we can see the text label again. Um, and there's another interesting thing we can do with this uh, scrolling frame with all these objects inside of it is that we can create this sort of list with it and make it go all the way down uh, to the bottom of the page if we so desire to. There is one instance I'm going to add into this scrolling frame that you probably don't know of yet and you can basically just follow along what I do uh, in this case, but we're basically going to add in a UI list constraint. So let's hit the plus sign next to scrolling frame and let's add in a UI list layout. My, my apologies, that's what it's called. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our text label and we're going to duplicate this over and over and over and over again until we reach the bottom of the page. So we're just gonna keep on doing this until we reach the bottom of the page. And now we have pretty much reached the bottom of the page where this entire scrolling this entire scrolling frame is just filled with all of these different text labels um, that we can pretty much see if we just scroll up and down, we can see all of them. But here's an interesting thing, is that if we keep duplicating it once we reach the bottom of the page, we can no longer see these um, elements past the scrolling size. So there's one way we can um, dynamically change the size of this, um, of this canvas, and that is by doing two things. So the first way we can do this is by going on the right side and changing the canvas size directly on this Y uh, position here. However, I don't recommend this because if we, let's say, change the scale of this manually to, let's say, three, then it's going to automatically scale uh, these elements if we choose, if we chose to have these um, text labels be scaled with its size rather than offset rather than pixel by pixel. So you didn't see that here, but if we changed the size of these elements to uh, use scale instead of uh, size by size pixels, then it would have been a lot different and it would have been more confusing to do. So what I recommend is checking this option right here with this property that says automatic canvas size. So let's open this up and there should be three options here. There should be X, X, Y, and Y. Basically what these properties mean is that if we let's say had elements that kept going up and down and it reached our canvas size, what we would tell Roblox to do is if we picked Y for instance, it'll dynamically increase the size of our canvas uh, depending on how many elements we have on this um, on the scrolling frame. So let's take our uh, text label and let's keep duplicating. And as you can see, the scrolling frame is automatically sizing resizing itself to fit all of these elements inside of the screen. And we can pretty much do the same thing with uh, the X as well. So X meaning that if we go from left and right, it's automatically going to uh, resize itself if we reach the end of the scrolling label. So, or you could do this both ways with X and Y together uh, if you so desire to do so, and that is another way of doing it. So that is a little something I wanted to add to the scrolling frame, which I found to be pretty interesting. There's also a couple customizable things we can do with the scrolling bar itself, like uh, change the image color to something different, like green, or I don't know, just anything really. Uh, we can even change the thickness to, let's say, 20. Uh, we can even change the transparency to something even harder to see. Uh, and just like general customizational stuff like that. You can even change the image of uh, each part of this scrolling bar if you really want to. Another property that's interesting to know about is canvas position, which basically tells us which place in the scrolling are we uh, located in right now. So according to this, we are 1,526 pixels down into the scrolling frame. And if we go all the way back up, then we're gonna reach back to the origin of zero and zero. So because this is a scrolling frame from top to bottom, it's going to update the Y position uh, every time we go down or go up the, the scrolling frame. 
Another thing we can do to the scrolling frame is make it go horizontal from left to right instead of scrolling up and down. The way we would do this is change the canvas size of the X property over here rather than the Y property. So the canvas size currently is two for the Y property. So if we change this to zero and we change this X property to two instead, what we're gonna see are two scroll bars because right now we have it set up so that it'll automatically size itself based on the X and Y uh, axes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, select just X so that now we can't see what's going to happen on the right side of the screen. So now what's gonna happen is that we have this scroll bar down here at the bottom that goes from left and right. So if I scroll down, technically speaking, then it's gonna go to the right. And I can keep doing this forever until we reach the end of the scroll frame and then we can go back over here seeing all the stuff on the left side of the screen so it's basically the same principle it's just now that we're it's just now we're able to scroll this from left to right rather than top to bottom so I think that's another uh, important distinction to know about and of course if you want to automatically scale the size of it just be sure that you have X and Y or just X set to true it doesn't really matter which one as long as um, you achieve the result that you do want from this scrolling frame I hope this video gave you a good understanding of frames and scrolling frames, because these are definitely one of those uh, GUI, GUI elements that should be necessary to know about, especially for the future of your Roblox games when you create more complicated GUI elements that you may have to organize and also be smart about, about how you should go about organizing your game and manipulating GUI elements contained inside of uh, frames and scrolling frames that you may use and that may help you uh, later down the line. So if you wanna learn about some of the elements that uh, I included inside of this video, like this uh, button for instance, then I encourage you to watch my text button video that I'm gonna have for you right here to watch. And that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode. So if you enjoyed it, then I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.